living from our heart, living from our core, living from our power, we all get more. We are powerful women. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Heart Whisper Summit. If you've been here with us for a while, you know that I'm Sue Erda. I'm your host for this event, and I get the grateful job of welcoming all of these 20 authors of the book, Heart Whispers. And I love introducing them to you because I know that you're here to hear their topics. You're here for yourself because you want to learn how to listen more closely to your own heart whispers. And these women, well, they will definitely inspire you. Today, we're going to be talking with Debbie Weiss, one of our authors, and I will read a brief introduction of Debbie, and then we'll get started talking with her. With more than five decades of confronting life's most daunting challenges under her belt, Debbie Weiss is an expert in triumphing over limiting beliefs to achieve her dreams and inspiring others to do the same. Debbie is the author of the memoir, On Second Thought, Maybe I Can, which is scheduled for publication on August 2023. As a multifaceted entrepreneur, Debbie operates both an insurance agency and her own online store, A Sprinkle of Hearts. She is also the host of the podcast, Maybe I Can, as well as a speaker, dedicated family caregiver, and a mother. And Debbie, I am happy to welcome you today. How are you? I'm great, Sue. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm doing well today. Thank you so much. Good. Um, you know, I do love this topic that you have in the name of your book, On Second Thought, Maybe I Can. And the subtitle you chose, Taking Control of Your Own Destiny. I like that very much, too. We're going to talk about what these mean. But let's talk about you have a podcast titled Maybe I Can. Why did you choose that name? Because for so long, my mantra internally was I can't. And it wasn't until I changed that to, hey, wait a second, maybe I can that my life has transformed since that moment. And that's the moment that I decided to take control. And I think that so many of us are so quick to be negative or just say no right away, because maybe it's something we're afraid of. Maybe it's out of our comfort zone. And that's just our knee jerk reaction. And when we are able to stop that, pause and realize, hey, Maybe I can do something. Maybe I can pursue a dream. Everything starts to change. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it opens up any possibility then. Just maybe, just maybe. doesn't say I definitely can, but just maybe. So then the wheels start turning. How can I do this? I like that. That's a great introduction. So, you know, um, for yourself or for anybody out there, what are the things that keep um, coming up like excuses or circumstances or reasons that you keep telling yourself you couldn't do something? Oh, boy, they're endless, right? It depends on what the situation is. Either I don't have enough money. I don't know how to do something. I don't have the time. I have to take care of everyone else. There. The list can go on and on forever. I don't know how to do this. I, it, I, I specifically for me, there are certain things that I don't do, right? So I don't do crafts. I don't do art. I don't cook. Those were things that I told myself. I convinced myself, I just don't do these things. And so if anything in any of those areas would come up, nope, don't do it. So the list of excuses honestly could could uh, go on indefinitely. Yeah, it, it can. And we then convince ourselves too, it's not an excuse, it's a reason, it's real, right? So was there some aha moment that you had when you shifted yourself from that I can't to I can? So, you know, at the time I didn't realize it was an aha moment, but looking back um, around the time that I turned 50, I, well, let me first say that I have had a lifelong weight problem. Okay. I've struggled with being overweight since the minute that I was born. You too, huh? Me too. I, I think a lot of us. And so- Maybe like you, I have been on every diet in the world. And, you know, what was my excuse? Oh, I have a low, you know, slow metabolism, right? Like 
look at them. I would always be looking at everybody else and watching what they ate and saying, why are they so lucky? Look, they can eat that ice cream. They can, you know, whatever it was. And I was jealous. I was, it was poor me. What was me? What was me? And at my, you know, 183rd attempt at Weight Watchers, after I turned 50, something dawned on me, which was, hey, wait a second. Maybe those people aren't eating like that all of the time. Maybe I'm just seeing them at, you know, a, a, in a restaurant, at a party, something like that, where maybe I was eating like that 80% of the time instead of, you know, the, the flip-flop. The other thing that kind of happened at the same time was I realized I'm never getting off of this. Like there is no end point. And I always had that I'm on the diet, I'm off the diet, right? That perfectionist thing, either I'm on or I'm off. There's no in between. And when I shifted my mindset to say, hey, I'm, I'm never getting off this. This is a lifestyle. That's when everything started to change. And when I noticed, again, now retrospectively, when I noticed that just that shift in my thinking made all the difference in how I approached weight loss. And obviously it can be applied to anything else. So I would say that was my aha moment. That's interesting too, because it's true. Life is a continuum, right? You know, and there are certain things that have endings and we know this, but you know, like for eating, like you got to eat it every day. It's not like you quit eating, you know, not like smoking. You could quit smoking. You can't quit eating. You have to figure it out and do what's right for you. Um, I just want to say, so did you end up, you know, with the weight journey? Because I know that we are not the only ones that have been through this. There are people listening, and I know this is a little off topic, but what was it that you um, that made come, you uh, decided it was okay? You were okay. You said you had that aha moment that says you're not getting off this, but what, what made you decide it's okay and you were able to really, uh, what did you change? I think I didn't worry about when it was going to happen and, oh, I have to weigh this certain amount. And instead of being so focused on the results, instead focus on the process and Mm -hmm. be kinder to myself. And, and by the way, I'm still not at the weight, I guess that I would want to be, but, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm a work in progress. I constantly am. And instead of beating myself up every time I eat something that I feel like I shouldn't be eating or I skip my exercise class, whatever it is, be I have to be kind to myself instead of berate myself. And then that allowed me not to have that um, perfectionist syndrome where I don't know about you, but if I was on a very strict diet and I quote unquote cheated, Well, then it was like, oh, well, I already blew it. So I might as well open up the cabinets and eat everything because this is my opportunity, right? To really have like a a party here because, oh, tomorrow I've got to start again. Yeah. And losing that mentality and and losing that, um, you know, just being kinder to myself. Yeah, that's good. Kindness. That's That's an easy thing for all of us to remember. So that's great. So, so Debbie, tell me about a situation when, you know, after you had shifted your attitude and you have this, I can do this attitude, tell me about a situation where you applied this, I can to it and what happened for you. I would say writing, there's so many situations, but the, the biggest obstacle or situation that I changed my mindset was actually writing my memoir. People had said to me for years, oh, your story is so interesting. You really need to write a book. And honestly, when somebody said that, I I just laughed and said, yeah, yeah, maybe someday. But it was never even a thought in my mind. And as time went on, something happened and I, well, okay, here we go. Here's a perfect example of what I can't do. I can't write. There you go. I can't write. I am a math person. When I was in school, right? I don't, and I don't know, right? 
right side, left side. I get so confused what side it is, but whatever side math was on, that's my side. I'm good at math, which means I was fine. I always liked to read, but writing, you know, no, didn't really interest me. So I don't write. So why is anybody even saying this to me? And in my transformational journey, I started journaling. And that was also something else that I said, I can't journal. Just the idea of opening up to a blank page and whether I'm using a prompt or not, just writing seemed like a waste of time to me, quite frankly. So I don't do that. I can't do that. Something that I heard, I think maybe on a podcast said, okay, you know, maybe I can, let me just try this. And when I did it, it amazed me what I found and how helpful it was to do this. And it was so interesting how I started writing and maybe I was writing on one topic. And by the time I got done, my mind had taken me somewhere completely different. I was just floored by it. And again, at this time, something came up about me writing a memoir. And at the same time, my husband was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. And I was actually talking to my therapist about taking this 12-week course for first-time authors. And I talked about all of my concerns. One, how do I even think that at a time that's so stressful in my life and I do need to be there for my husband and my family, would I even consider taking something like this on? And then I was concerned, well, what if I'm not good enough? What if we have to go and read what we wrote and I'm going to be so embarrassed because my writing sounds juvenile? Or what if I don't do the homework assignment because I'm busy with my husband and I don't get it done? And she really gave me permission to say, who cares? Like, who cares? You do the best you can. Right. And bottom line, I joined the course. And in almost 12 weeks, like probably about 16 weeks, I wrote my memoir and it wound up to be such a cathartic um, process and something that was actually really helpful to me at a, an extremely stressful time in my life. And looking back a year ago now, I was still saying, I can't, I would never do that. And in a few months, I'll have that book in my hands. Yes, I know. It's amazing. And that's what happens. It, it just opens up. You don't know until you know, until you start writing. It just, it starts to come forth. And, and that's wonderful. I'm so happy you had that experience. So Debbie, now that you have this I can attitude, what have some of your accomplishments been? So something on a smaller scale is, like I said earlier, knitting. I, um, you know, be careful what you say out loud, right? Because now all my friends and family know that, you know, I have this, I can, maybe I can attitude as opposed to I can't. And I was having a discussion with a friend about uh, reading Michelle Obama's book, most recent book. And in the beginning, she talks about the fact that she took up knitting during the pandemic. And my friend is an avid knitter. So I was telling her, oh, did you read this? This is what Michelle Obama said. And she said, yes. And she said, um, do you want to learn to knit? And I paused because the first thing that went into my head is I don't knit. I don't like crafts. No. And then I said, well, I'll try, but and then I still listed every excuse under the sun while I'll do it, but I'm not going to be good at it. I have to say, so many months later, I have knit two baby hats and I'm in the middle of a scarf, but since it's summer, I still have some time to go and I'm looking to do my next project. And I have found that it is very... Um, I don't know, there's, there is something meditative about it and I really enjoy it. So that's one thing. The other thing in particular lately that I have had to do is learn to cook. I'm almost 60 years old and I don't know how to cook. My husband was uh, an avid 
chef. She, he should have, that should have been his profession. And so the kitchen was his domain. And prior to meeting him, I lived on frozen dinners. Well, now I've got to learn to cook. And this is something that I said, never in my life, I don't care. I will never learn to cook. I have to say, I am not so good. The air fryer is my best friend, (laughs) but you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And something that I thought would be impossible is not impossible. When you shift your mindset and you give yourself the opportunity to learn and experience new things. Yep. I love that. I love that saying I can, and I can at least try. And that's good. It's not the Star Wars Yoda thing, right? Do or do not. There is no try. That's not true. I used to think try was a weak word, but truly it's not. It's it, it opens up the world of opportunities for you. So I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. So Debbie, how has your life changed, your day-to-day kind of living changed because of this attitude? It 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 really has done a 180. I have, I do have a full-time job, as you mentioned in the beginning. I run an insurance agency. And I, it, I enjoy it. It's, it's fine. That's, I don't know how else to say it. It's not my dream. It's not, I don't wake up. I didn't wake up every day and um, dread going to work or anything like that. But since I started saying, maybe I can, and I've opened up a whole new world of opportunity with this book, with becoming a speaker Every morning, I am so excited to get to work because I'm learning so many new things every day. And I am exploring all different areas, things that I don't know about. And, you know, as I turn 60 this year, it's, I talk to other people and, and usually at this age, right, you'd say, oh, I'm slowing down. And instead I'm ramping up and I, I feel like, like a kid, like being in school and every day is just exciting. I truly wake up and look forward to what's in front of me for the day. I love that. And you know what, anybody listening, that's what everybody wants, right? We want to be excited about our lives. We want to enjoy and know that there's something new and exciting or just something that we're going to enjoy and be comfortable in, you know, whatever that is. So I love that. You know, um, Debbie, I love quotes from people. They inspire me. They empower me. They motivate me, all that. I know you have one you'd like to share with our audience. What is that? I do. You know, I was never a person. I, I enjoy hearing quotes, but I I always felt that everybody else seemed to have like a quote that um, drove their life forward. And I thought, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I come up with a quote? One day I was, maybe I was writing. I really don't recall what I was doing. And something popped into my head and I thought to myself, boy, that sounds good. Did I make that up? Or did somebody else say it? And I had a Google and it turned out somebody else said it. And it was Glinda the Good Witch from the Wizard of Oz who said, you've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. And boy, did that really resonate with me because it was a great reminder that I've been living life being controlled by everyone else and all of life circumstances and hadn't realized that I had the power just by changing my thinking and what I focus on, I can do anything. Yep. I love that. I knew that was the quote you were going to say when you said Glinda the Good Witch, because that's a wonderful quote. And it's so, so true. And really, when we look back, it's like nobody can empower us. They can empower us for possibility, but like really that comes from within. So I love that. Yeah, that's so cool. So um, Debbie, do you have any final words for our audience? Anything that you didn't get to share, you know, that you might want to share with them and leave them with? I would say, you know, stop limiting yourself. If you have a dream, even, you know, even if you don't know what your dream is, because I didn't know what my dream was, I just felt that there was something more. And just the act of starting to explore that is life-changing. 
Mm, I love that. So Debbie, I know that there are people on this call that are going to want to reach out to you, contact you, stay connected. How can they do that? Through my website, it's Debbie, D-E-B-B-I-E-R is my middle initial, Weiss, W-E-I-S-S dot com. So Debbie R. Weiss dot com, or you can always find me on TikTok or Instagram at Debbie dot R dot Weiss. Awesome. Thanks, Debbie. So Debbie, thank you so much for being here with us. I appreciate everything you shared today. I love, I can, you know, maybe I can. I love that. And I know our listeners are going to take that with them. Thanks for sharing your story in the book too. I appreciate that so much. And I'm looking forward to um, all our readers reading that. Thank you so much for having me, Sue. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. And listeners, thank you. Thanks for giving yourself this gift because, you know, maybe you can, maybe you can move forward and have the life that you desire and start listening more closely to your own heart whispers because you've been inspired by these authors. And I would, I know you'll be inspired if you buy this book, Heart Whispers on launch day, which is June 22nd. So um, on launch day, we have a 99 cent Kindle special. So what you'll do to buy the book and get directed to that special, come to our website, heartwhispersbook.com. We'll guide you to the right Amazon link for your country. And then you will be able to purchase that book. When you have your receipt number, bring that back to the website, plug it in, and you will have access to all of the, our gifts from our authors and our partners. There's about 40 gifts there. It's going to be great. You're going to love these gifts. Everything is free. There are free downloads, meditations, discovery calls, all kinds of things. So definitely you want to do that. June 22nd, heartwhispersbook.com. Give yourself this gift. And thank you so much for being here. Listen to those whispers of your heart today. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.